Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton, your host, and I'm just blessed and thrilled and happy that you're with me today. Of course, I'm a happy person anyway, that's the way I am. I always look at the glasses half full. How do you look at it? Half empty or half full? Well, if you start looking things through God's eyes, you'll start looking at, oh man, I'm, I've got good things in store. That's why I get up every day of my life and say something good is gonna happen to me today. Why? Not because I'm just optimistic, it's because of what Jesus has done for me. Oh, you're one of those Jesus folks. You better believe it, man. He healed me of an incurable disease. He gave me all the finances to pay off my mortgage and get totally out of debt. He taught me how to never have another down day the rest of my life. He gave me a wife that I married in 1981 and I've got a heavenly marriage. I'll tell you what, you, yep, I'm a Jesus follower. <laughs> I'm one of them people, yeah. And, uh, but it changed my life. I'm not talking religion, I'm talking a relationship. I, I went to church all my life and I didn't live free. I didn't live free spiritually. I didn't live free physically. I didn't live free financially. I didn't live free mentally. But boy, after learning all these things I've learned about Jesus over these years, I am flat enjoying my life. And God wants you to enjoy your life too. And you can if you put God first. You know, I was thinking about before I came on the air a verse of scripture that most of us probably know. If you're watching, you don't know it. I'll quote it. But Proverbs 3, 5 that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and de don't lean to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. It's a faith walk. It's, it's where we trust God and believe God. We read the Bible. We read the Word of God and we see God says this. And so, okay, Lord, I'm going to believe that even though it doesn't look like it's working in my natural life. I'm going to believe that. And guess what happens? God behind the scenes where you can't see Him because He's in another realm... You know, we call it the spirit realm, but it's actually more real than this realm. But God works in that realm, and it's connected to our realm, and so He's able to transfer things from that realm into our realm, and then things happen, and that's how I got healed of an incurable disease. Health from the spirit realm, health from God realm, health came from that eternal realm is what it is because it's where you and I are going to live eternity if we know Jesus. Uh, that eternal realm, it transfers things into this realm. That's why Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we can have things that are on in heaven transferred on earth and happen in our lives on the earth. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, the next verse says, Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And then what happens as a result? He directs our paths in all our ways. In all our ways, the word all means all. <laughs> so you've got to let Him direct your path in your marriage ways. You've got to let Him direct your path in your eating, your physical health ways, what you eat and, and so forth. Um, you've got to let Him direct your path in your finances. Are you using your money in the kingdom of God first before any paying bills or anything else? Are you putting God first? You've got to let Him direct your paths. And He'll make you rich financially if you do. You are, what about are you letting Him direct your paths mentally and emotionally? In other words, your feelings, your emotions. Are you letting God direct those paths or people or hormones or chemicals or whatever? You can change all of the natural with the power of God in, the, in that uh, eternal supernatural realm. You can't. So I encourage you to do that. But, uh, anyway, we, let's get on because uh, I need to finish up a series we've been doing. Two weeks ago, we started a series. This is actually our 10th program on this series. So we've done nine programs before this on the subject that God wants you happy. And He has just made a way and made a plan and made it so easy for us. And then when we find out true happiness... Uh, how, to, how to be happy, then, then we add to all of those, uh, uh, add to that happiness with things throughout the day that make us happy or make us happier, you know. Um, and so I want to go on, we, we've, we've actually studied a lot of things, so if you want to learn to be a happy person, and you can be, and you know what's so fun about being a happy person? People enjoy being around us. Yeah, I don't, I don't enjoy being around people that are not happy. I enjoy if God sent me there and if I'm there to minister to them and try and lift them up. God wants them happy. God wants them full of joy, full of peace, happy, full of love, full of goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. God wants them enjoying life. 
But if they're not enjoying life and God sends me across their path, I'm going to do everything else to pull everything I can to pull them up, give them the word of life that makes them happy. Uh, but if a person doesn't want to be happy, they're not the kind of people I want to hang around. And if I do want to hang around them, I'm going to do everything to change them. <laughs> right? Amen. But in other words, you just you don't want to really be around people. They just don't draw you. Ooh, that's, ooh, that person is so fun to be around. Look, they're always depressed and always stressed and always mad and always uptight. And oh, come on, let's, always anxious and always having attacks. And <laughs> yeah, I like being around those kind of people. No, you don't. Only if you're ministering light to them and pulling them up out of the muck and mire of life, then you enjoy it. All right, so let's talk about, let's continue things about how to be happy. God wants every one of us happy, and we found out there is the first and foremost thing to be happy. And again, we're talk, not talking happy naturally speaking. We're talking happy in the natural but godly happiness. So, the, so then I wake up happy. Throughout the day, I'm happy. I think myself happy. I go to bed happy. I'm a happy person. I'm a happy camper, as they say. Uh, that's the way I live my life. And so uh, you can be that way. So we've discussed a lot of different things. But the number one thing is, is Jesus has to be your Lord. You have to have your complete and total trust and faith in Jesus in every area. That's why I was just thinking about that proverb, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean into your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. So you've got to know his ways. You've got to get into his word and learn his ways and make them your thoughts and trust him. And if you trust him, you will be a happy person. Happy is the man that trusts in the Lord, the Bible says. And we've looked at a lot of scriptures about that. But let's, let's pick up another aspect of happiness. I was looking at all the scriptures that talk about being glad, and I saw that even the Hebrew <clears throat> definitions and the Greek definitions of glad were so close to happy. I mean... If you're glad, now you can be glad about something and not be a happy person. So I understand that, and that's not what I'm talking about here. But I have noticed that if, if a Christian is glad about the right things, they are 100% of the time a happy person. Because I'm, I'm glad about a lot of things, but they're the right things. When I'm, when I'm glad about natural things, then things can happen that I'm not glad about, but I'm still a happy person, see? So that's why I say you can be glad about something and not necessarily happy a person. But if you're glad about the right things, you will be a happy person. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So, Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Let's look at verses 33 and 34. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. Oh, yes, I will. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. So as long as I'm living in this body, I'm going to sing praises to my God. Uh, my meditation, so that's my thinking, my thoughts, my not, not just uh, fleeting thoughts, you know, just thoughts that you have and you go, don't, don't think about, but you actually stop and meditate on. My meditation on Him shall be sweet and I will be glad in the Lord. Hmm. My meditation on Him, my thinking on Him is going to be sweet. Therefore, what's going to be the result? I'm going to be glad in the Lord. But you, you have to be thinking about Him. You have to be meditating on His Word. And what does He have to say? That's why I tell people the Word is my lifeline. Man, I'll tell you what, it's my lifeline. And, 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 and I get life out of every, even reading passages like this. Life is imparted. Health, strength, joy, peace, <laughs> Woo, gentleness, kindness, wow, everything, love. All the things that are imparted. So God said, I will be glad. So that means you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy in the Lord when you're singing to Him as long as you live, when you praise Him as long as you have your being, when you meditate on Him and your meditation is sweet, not thinking, oh God, you're an ogre. No, not a big old ogre sitting up in heaven with a baseball bat ready to smack you when you missed it. That's not our God. Our God has already released all blessings of heaven. Even, in fact, he planted even before you were born, Ephesians says. All right, let's look at uh, Psalm 26.3. Here's another good one. Psalm 26.3. You want to be happy, man? Just trust in the Lord. Be a happy person. The Lord, this is what Psalm 26.3 says, The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are sad. 
<laughs> Brother Larry, it doesn't say that. No, whereof we are mad. No, it doesn't say that. Whereof we are had. No, it doesn't say that. It says, the Lord has done great things for us, wherefore we are what? Glad. Man, when you stop and think about what He's done for you, it will make you happy. It will bring gladness and joy and all that in your, in your life. The Lord has done great things for us. So, I'm glad. What's the Lord? You know, if, if you can't think of anything, maybe it's because you haven't spent much time in the Word of God. But if you know this, you know, Jesus came. I mean, maybe you learned it during a Christmas season, you know. God so loved the world that He sent Jesus, and Jesus came and born in a manger, grew up as a man, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost at the age of 30, and then for three, three and a half years, he had a public ministry, and uh, he went about doing good and healing everybody that was oppressed of the devil, then he died, and then the Bible said he rose again, but when he was on the cross, he bore all of humanity's sins so that all of humanity could receive Jesus and because of his act of love, then they could receive the love of the Father. God so loved the world that he gave Jesus that whoever believes in him who believes in Jesus will not perish, die and go to hell, but have everlasting life. In other words, go to heaven. So you just meditate on that one thing. Jesus, you bore my sins. And, and 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, Him who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become right with God. That's what righteousness means, right with God, in right standing, having the favor of God in our lives. God favors me. God loves me. God, God wants to bless me. In fact, He has blessed me, and I just got to learn to receive it by faith, and then grace flows when I do. Let the, the Lord has done great things for us, wherefore we are glad. Look at uh, Psalm 35. We're here in the Psalms. Let's look at some more Psalms. 35. Verse 27, Psalm 35, 27, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them be happy. <laughs> yes, let them say, those of us that shout for joy and are glad and happy, let us say continually, let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of His servant. Man, isn't that good? God, magnify God because He takes pleasure in your prosperity. Actually, if you look up this Hebrew word prosperity, it's talking financial prosperity. He prosper, but, but now, not just financial. Actually, the word means even more than financial because if you look up different terms prosperity in the Bible, you find out He does want you prospering in your finances. He wants you debt free. In fact, being the lender, not the borrower, is part of the blessing of walking with God. That's even Old Covenant. We're under a better covenant. <laughs> Thank God we're under a better covenant. But let him shout for joy and favor my righteous cause. Yes, let him say continually, let the Lord be magnified. He takes pleasure in our prosperity. So he prospers us financially. He prospers us physically. He prospers us spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, maritally. He prospers our marriages. But it says this, we're to, we're to shout for joy and be glad, be happy. Why? Because we favor God's righteous cause. There's the key right there. Are you favoring righteousness? Are you favoring what God's done? Are you favoring what Jesus has done for you? And then it says we're to magnify God because He takes pleasure in our prosperity. Just start thinking, God, you, you, you take pleasure. You're actually pleased with when I get a raise. You're pleased with when I'm healthy in my body. You're pleased with when my marriage is going great. You're pleased with that. takes pleasure in that. Look at Psalm 40. Let's go over, jump over to Psalm 40. Psalm chapter 40, verse 16, Let all those that seek you, Lord, be glad, be happy in you. <laughs> let such as love your salvation say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Uh, I'm going to talk about that one, but I want to look at another psalm that says the same thing, and then, and, and then we'll pick up on it. Psalm 70, verse 4, you're going to see it says the same thing. Uh, psalm 70, verse 4, Let all those that seek you rejoice and be happy, be glad, and let such as love your salvation continually magnify you. Love your what? Love your salvation. See, His salvation, if you look up that word, salvation, it includes prosperity, so financial prosperity, but it includes deliverance. If you have something you've been bound to, whether it's alcohol or 
uh, nicotine or drugs or bound to uh, um, porno pornography, whatever. There's different things you can be bound to. Uh, a wrong lifestyle, you're bound. And all of a sudden, you get salvation. Salvation delivers you from those things. Man, I'm telling you, our salvation is a total salvation. He has delivered us from sin. He has delivered our physical bodies from sickness. He has delivered our finances from having poverty and lack so we can pay our mortgages off, pay our debt off, and be debt free. He's delivered our mind and our feelings and our emotions so that we can live in peace and joy and tranquility and contentment. And Wow, what a great salvation. So what does that do? Well, that means you're going to magnify God continually. You're just going to continue. I do this every day, man. I get out of bed doing it. I'm just thanking God for what He's done for me today. And I'm telling you what, it just sparks your faith. It sparks your joy, your peace. You're happy. You're always happy. You're a happy person. Wow, glory to God. Let's look at another one, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is one that a lot of people quote, even though they may not know where it's found in the Bible. But Psalm 118, verse 24, look at it. Um, this is a day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Whew, this is a day the Lord has made. Somebody said, well, I tell you what, it may be a day the Lord had made, but I can't rejoice because all, all, all hell's broken loose in my life. Oh my God, what am I going to do? No, no, wait, stop, stop, stop. You want to break, you want to let all heaven break loose? Because that'll make you happy. <laughs> It's time to start doing what this said. Start saying, this is a day the Lord has made. We will. Uh, 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 uh. Watch what it says. We will. Not we feel like. Because you don't feel like. When you have all hell breaking loose, you don't feel like rejoicing and being happy and being glad. But God says, we will. So it's an act. It's a choice, friend. I can choose. This is a day which the Lord had made. And you know why I can choose that? Because I know the Bible. See, it's important to know the word. So if you go to Psalm 68, 19, I'm not going to turn there, but it, it says that, that God daily, this is a day, this is what we're looking at here. This is a day the Lord has made, but that Psalm 68, 19 says he daily, in other words, this day that he just made, he daily loads me with benefits. Oh, this is a day the Lord has made. And every single day, which is this day, that the Lord has made, He loads me with benefits so I can rejoice and be glad, right? What are the benefits? Well, uh, uh, it says, in fact, that Psalm 68, 19, He daily loads us with benefits. It says He's the God of our salvation. And that word salvation, like these other ones, is, is the uh, Hebrew word that means saved, it means deliverance, it means victory, giving you the victory, prosperity, uh, health, um, save, saving, welfare. Uh, you're, he, he, he takes care of your welfare. Not, not talking about financial welfare like in the world, but welfare, take, make sure you're well and, and you're faring well. <laughs> yeah, that's what that word welfare means. So I can be glad because God daily loads me with benefits. So every day, you know what I do? I quote the 103rd Psalm. In fact, I'm going to turn over there in just a moment. 103rd Psalm, I, I'll get out of bed and I'll just say, Lord, this is the day you have made. I rejoice. I'm glad today. Lord God, thank you so much. Whew, glory to God. Hallelujah. This is your day. And, and, and by the way, Lord, you daily load me with benefits. And then I'll start quoting the benefits. That's, what I, that's the ones I want you to see. Look at the benefits. Now remember, this is a day the Lord hath made. The one that, you know, all hell's broken loose. This is a day. So you want all heaven to break loose because that's going to change it. That's going to change your day, man. You got to get a hold of this. It's going to change your day when you all let all heaven break loose. All right. So you start rejoicing and being glad because of the benefits he gives you daily. So watch this. Psalm 103, verse 3. He forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with His loving kindness and crowns you with His tender mercy. So this is a whole different picture. The God that I grew up believing in was going to crown me, all right, with a big baseball bat. He's up in heaven. Oh, He's a mean God. He's a mean ogre sitting up in heaven. He's going to get me if I miss it. Oh, God's going to get you. And so I had this picture. He's going to crown me, all right. <laughs> Bolt of lightning. He's going to crown me, all right. But no, this says He crowns me with loving kindness. Boom! 
Oh, he loves you so much. <laughs> and he crowns you with tender mercies. Boom! Mercies. His mercies are new every morning. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You crown me. And th this crown makes me feel good. Ooh, I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and wear this crown, your loving kindness. Ooh, I'll go ahead and crown this crown you put. Ooh, you're crowning me with loving kindness. Ooh, you're crowning me with your tender mercies. Remember when blind Bartimaeus said, have mercy on me, and he got his eyes healed? Ooh, tender mercies, new every morning, the Bible says. Yeah. And then it says, and he satisfies my mouth with good things, so my youth is renewed like the eagles. Whew, this is so good. Man, forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from being destroyed. In other words, accidents taking your life and all that kind of stuff. Uh, crowns you with his loving kindness because he loves you so much, so he's always going to do kind acts to you. And that means even when you've screwed up and missed it, my friend. Just because you haven't been kind doesn't mean you're going to change him. He's still going to be kind to you because he loves you. These are benefits. You may not partake of them every day, but these are benefits that belong to you and will make you happy. Praise God. Redeems your life, crowns you with loving kindness and mercy. And then verse 5, satisfies your mouth with good things. Satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth can be renewed like the eagles. Well, What's the best good thing that you can satisfy your mouth with? <laughs> the best good thing, uh, I think it's Hebrews calls, yeah, it is Hebrews 6, 5, I think it is, that calls God's word the good word. There's the good thing you can satisfy your mouth with. Get your, get your mouth filled with God's word. Uh, uh, Joshua, Joshua 1, 8 says, don't let your mouth be empty or void of God's word. Make sure you're continually speaking God's word because then you'll meditate day and night in it, and then you'll observe to do it, and then you'll have good success, which goes right along with James 1, 15. You're observing to do the Word, and then you're going to be blessed in your doing. Yeah. So get the Word of God, and then it says He'll renew your youth like the eagles. That's why, man, I'm just going to keep strong and healthy all the days of my life. I was born in 1954, and I'm just as healthy today. I'm, I'm going to keep just walking in health. I'm going to be like Moses. If Jesus tarries at 120, Moses was still standing straight, strong, didn't have arthritis, brisitis, tendonitis. He only had Goditis. <laughs> Hallelujah. So at 120, I'll still be strong and healthy. Listen, if people don't hear this preach, they won't believe it. And if you don't believe it, it, won't act, it won't, you won't act like it. And you don't act like it, and you're not going to get it because faith is an act. So... I'm going to continually at 120, if Jesus tarries, I'll still have perfect eyesight in my eyes. I'll still be strong and healthy, and I'll still be preaching the good news that sets people free. Amen. I'm not going to be old and corrupt. Now, now, if you know people that are, if you're watching, you are. You can start speaking life and health over your body and change that thing, because God said so. Hallelujah. I'm going to do a teaching on that fairly soon, I think. So keep, keep watching, because I'm going to do a whole series on on what God calls long life, not long existence, not living long, but what does God actually call long life? There's actually lots of scriptures, and you need to see it. It's life-changing. All right? Um, here's another good proverb, heaviness. Proverbs 12, 25. Heaviness in the heart of man makes it stoop, but a good word makes it glad. A good word? Well, God's word is a good word, so... Get God's Word in your mouth and it'll cause your heart, instead of stooping and being sad and depressed, it'll pick it up and all of a sudden you'll be a happy person. You'll be a happy camper. Let's look at another passage. We're going to have to close this series with this. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. This is New Testament. And his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. The New Living says, For the Scriptures say, If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Happy days. Happy days. Contemporary English version said, Do you really want to love life? Do you really want to be happy? We started this whole series ten programs ago. I asked you that question. And you know what everybody would answer? Yeah, I want to be happy. He says, do you really love life? People say, no, I don't love my life the way things are going. Yeah, but do you want to love your life? Yes. Do you want to be happy? Yes. Then 
Stop saying cruel things. This is a contemporary English version of, of 1 Peter 3.10. Stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Wow. So if you want to love your life and if you want to be happy, you've got to control your tongue. You've got to make sure your tongue is speaking God's word about yourself, to yourself, and about others, and to others. If we're going to be a happy person. That's all part of trusting in the Lord with all your heart and not leaning to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledging Him so He can direct your paths. Goes on in the next verse, Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It'll be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. You know what that is? Marrow, that's some moisture. That's the anointing of God. That's the glory of God even in your joints and bones so that your joints and bones don't wear out. You don't have to get them replaced. You can be totally healed, healthy, and whole. Wow. Man, I sure hope you've enjoyed this series. This has been a great series, hasn't it? Because it's lifted up Jesus and it shows us something that's relevant to our lives today, a state of mind that's an eternal thing called happiness. I can be happy every day of my life. Thank you for supporting us, partners, so that we can get this Word of God out. Man, you, you guys that send in monthly gifts and even auto-debit the way you do it in different, different ones, send in checks different. Thank you. You're helping us reach the people that are watching that haven't supported yet. And if you're watching and you haven't, man, help us get this word out to other people. It'll be a blessing to them just like it's being a blessing to you. Until next time, this is Larry Hutton letting you know I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Jesus-filled day. We'll see you then. Praise God. Would those who really know you say that you are happy? To be truthful, they would probably have to say that you're happy sometimes, and it depends for the most part upon what is going on in your life, whether good or bad things are happening. But God wants you to be happy no matter what circumstances you are in. In the Bible, one of the actual meanings for the word happy is blessed. Every human being in their right mind wants to be happy and blessed, not down and depressed. But apart from God, there is really just no hope of true happiness. In these two lessons, available as CDs or MP3 downloads, Larry Hutton reveals the Bible's simple and clear yet precise path for you to become truly happy and blessed, no matter what you may face. To order happy, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.